the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. Nobody has more kinds of cars or more kinds of people. See them at the sign of the cat. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you live, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What up, people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally doesn't work, and I hope everybody's having a great Tuesday. You know, I it's, I, 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 I was talking to my, my buddy Joseph Heatherly, shout out to Joseph Heatherly and stuff, and um, talking about the team and what, what is it really about with the Cowboys? Is it about winning or is it about something else? And I, I don't know. I honestly don't know anymore. Um, I waited two hours yesterday, and, and we did a live stream yesterday with Micah Parsons, uh, waiting for his podcast to see what he had to say and stuff, to see if there was going to be any anger or frustration or anything or focus on the game and so on. So maybe some insight and things uh, and all. And I got there at 445 because it's supposed to start at five and we literally stayed on until seven o'clock gave up because I had to take care of a leak in my house that I put off doing. And then we had the commander's game and about nine o'clock, uh, queen Bella let me know, Oh, the podcast did happen. It happened late, but it finally happened. And this may be one of those cases where you say, this is not helping our team win games. I get it. This is about Micah Parsons and his gig and so on. And I, I will never be mad at somebody for trying to make sure they're prepared for life after football. Because playing football for too long, we hear today, Brett Favre says he's got Parkinson's you know, syndrome, you know, which Parkinson's disease. And he's younger than I am. This is not good. You have to look at it for somebody who played football as long as he did, that probably football contributed to that that these guys are risking their lives out there and their quality of life after football. But yesterday, I'm going to play a clip from yesterday, Micah Parsons, talking about C.J. Gardner-Johnson. The Saints are a very good team. And C.J. Gardner-Johnson said they're pretenders. They're not, they ain't no contenders. They're pretenders. And they have Derek Carr. Remember that. I don't know who C.J. Gardner think he is, bro. I mean, we've been dealing with this cat for a while. I mean, we just got to be a little bit real right here. Like, I think Derek Carr has validated himself way before C.J. has ever done. Like, to in the most respectful way, I'm not taking away anything, but Derek Carr has been a, you know, a Pro Bowl quarter, uh, quarterback, you know, before, you know, highest paid quarterback before. Um, like, let's be real. Like, Derek Carr has always been – uh, a pretty damn quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're a contending team. You got to think <clears throat> the starting center went down in that game, Eric McCoy. Um, pretty probably they detrimental. Were, they were beat up um, pretty bad. Think Eagles. Ryan you know Ryan that. is still not playing. So they're very limited Tyson on the things Hill they can do. There. They have a rookie alignment out there. Um, Trevor Penning, a guy they benched, you know, before. And, you know, I'm not targeting these guys. You know, these guys that are playing in the league, so not like they're bad, but when, you know, you got a pretty much healthy roster against, you know, a damaged front, um, you know, it's kind of limits you on the things you can do. You know, you're trying to play off the guys you have on the field. I mean, that's what part of coaching is, you know. So I would say, you know, the Saints are a real contender. I mean, they still got a lot of weapons. They're just pretty banged up like a, a lot of other organizations. I mean, look at how look at their defense. They held that team to 15 points, um, produced three turnovers. 
Um, so any defense that's holding a team like the Eagles offense to under um, 17 points and producing those type of turnovers is a pretty damn team. I don't know. I mean, CJ must have an unrealistic idea what a pretty damn uh, team looks like because to me, that looks like a pretty good damn defense to me. If you're barely beating a team and the final score is 15 to 12, I mean, it it probably says a lot right there. I mean, it's not, it's not like you blew them out, right? So, you know, it, that's kind of mind-boggling statement to me. But, hey, every person has a, their own voice for their own platform. And for my platform, um, they are not pretenders. They are contenders. Okay. I'm not sure that we needed all that because – We got a game the day after tomorrow. And now we got a beef with CJ Gardner Johnson. So here's CJ back at this. All right. Let's start here. People say they don't know who Johnson Gardner Johnson is. Oh. I wake up out of my sleep to some bullshit on somebody's podcast. <laughs> All right. I got you. I got you. Where you want to start at? We can start anywhere from where you want to talk. We can start and talk from anywhere. So, um... Shout out to George Kittle. Love everything. Love, love competing against you. Your energy. You're a dog on both on the field. See you in the playoffs. Shout out Kittle. Hold on. Shout out to Marcus May. Salute. Glad to see you balling. Living the dream. Hometown. DBU, Florida. It's cool. Cool. Hold on. Hold on. Super Bowl champ. Shout out my cousin, Jamel Dean. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on, Teddy B. I got this when we was in New Orleans and I played with him. Crib shit. All right, cool. One love, cuz I'll keep balling. Get money, brother, since Jit, since Jit there. Shout out Juwan, it's my cousin. Jeff Okuda. All right, cool. So, the fact that you said nobody knows me, it's kind of crazy. So, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to shake your hand like a man when we play y'all. I ain't got no animosity. Like, bro, I appreciate and salute what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You one of the top DNs in the league, bro. Like, no bullshit, bro. Shout out to Michael Parsons, bro. I know who you are. If you don't know who I am, well, bro, I've been in the league six years. Yes, I bounce around from team to team. You know, trials and tribulations shit happens. But, you know, God got me, through, got me where I'm at. Shout out to Michael Parsons. When we play, I just want to be able to swap jerseys with you, bro. That's all. So you know who I am. If we can't do that, bro, shit, I, I guess you don't know me enough. I'm just being a real brother. Since we speaking on people, bro, I ain't got no animosity towards you, bro. I was, it was an emotional game. Everybody know I came from the wall. It was a good game from both sides. You know what I'm saying? Shit happened. Tempers flared. But that's crazy you said that. Nobody know me. So just give me a chance to come talk to you on your podcast. If that's real, if we, you feel me? That's all, bro. I just want, you know what I'm saying? If you don't know who I am, we can watch film from my rookie year all the way to now. When I picked off Tom Brady to when I snapped Pacheco in the Super Bowl. When I got a fourth down stop, we can look at it all, bro. If people don't know who I am, I apologize, bro. I apologize. I apologize if I ain't doing enough. You right, I ain't make a Pro Bowl yet, but shit, I won an NFC Championship, been to the Super Bowl. And I won a lot of, I won a lot of playoff games. I appreciate you, though, my boy. So we can talk whenever you want to, man to man. I ain't got no animosity towards you. Just let me know, can I get the jersey for the man, K? You can go on the wall. I know who you is, my G. You can go on the wall, my G. You can go on the wall. You can pick any wall you want to go on. Shit, I even call you, shit. You let me know, you feel me? Respectfully, I ain't got no animosity with you, bro. Keep going. God gonna bless you. God gonna bless me. I ain't got no hate towards another black man doing his thing, man. So there's that. Do we need this? Do we really need this? I mean, it's already the arrogance of the Dallas Cowboys. So now, you know, he, man feels disrespected. You know, this is why this is why we get everybody's best shot. You know, 
New Orleans, they came in there and said, let's blast these mother humpers because nobody thinks we're worth a damn. Nobody thinks we're worth a damn. Cowboys disrespect. Now you're going through, you know, disrespecting an eagle. So you don't think that he's going to come in there now and going to say, I got something to prove. This is ridiculous, man. See, and this is why, and, and I don't think Micah meant anything, disrespect, but see, people, it, it's better to let people think that you're an idiot than to open your mouth and let them find out for sure that you're an idiot. Oh, man. Can Thursday night get here? Just so, I, I mean, if it's, if it's going to be bad, if I'm going to be joked and clowned upon, let, let's just get it over with. Let's just get this thing over with because this shit is just plain ugly. Peace out.